Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers, and today we're going to talk about two subjects that seem very, very disconnected. We're going to talk about the dawn effect, that rise in blood sugar that everybody sees in the early morning, and human growth hormone. Human growth hormone. Tarzan, Arnold Schwarzenegger, we're going to talk about that. But just in the context of sugar. You see, The dawn effect is a particular concern for diabetics, but it's also a particular concern for most people because early in the morning when you first wake up, if ever you wear a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor, you'll see as soon as you wake up or or even just before you wake up, you'll see this massive rise in your blood sugar. And sometimes it can go up 60, 80, 100 uh, milligrams per deciliter without eating anything. Without eating anything. How the hell does that happen? And I just want to talk about the biology and show you how these things are all connected. You see, the way that this works is while you're asleep, throughout the day, we produce something called human growth hormone. It comes from the pituitary gland. And human growth hormone is there for tissue repair, tissue building. It is our most powerful anabolic hormone. Growth repair, uh, um, that's what HGH does. But like everything in the human body... When it goes up, when one thing goes up, there's something else that provides negative feedback to push it back down. So when human growth hormone levels rise, there's something else that suppresses them. And that suppression is somatostatin. Somatostatin is your anti-anabolic, your catabolic hormone, or the negative hormone. It shuts things down. It is there to control many, many, many of the uh, um, other hormone systems that are anabolic or pro-building. So how does this work? Well, in the brain, when you're asleep, when you're sleeping, that is when you really produce high levels of human growth hormone. And as those levels go up, it then reaches a particularly high level where you now get somatostatin being produced to start to drop that level down. And there are two places where somatostatin gets produced. The first place in the hypothalamus of the brain, where it's right next to the the pituitary gland. And the two things, the two hormones that the pituitary gland secretes, maybe three, that secretes at night, prolactin, thyroid hormone, or thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, that triggers the thyroid gland to produce hormone, and human growth hormone. Those are the three we're talking about. And all three of those tend to go up at night while we're asleep. And then somatostatin suppresses all three of those when they reach a particularly high level. But by the time they've reached a high level, they're working really, really well. So you want them to get to that high level, but you don't want them to get too high. Okay? And then somatostatin suppresses them. Well, in exactly the same way, somatostatin is the the hormone that gets produced by the pancreas, the duodenum, the stomach, that nobody talks about. Everybody's talking about insulin from the beta cells of the pancreas. More and more, we're talking about glucagon from the alpha cells of the pancreas. But very few people talk about the delta cells. You have three cells. When you look at a, a pancreatic islet, there are three cells there. Beta, insulin, alpha, glucagon, delta, somatostatin. And so matostatin controls both glucagon and insulin secretion. It dampens them down. So matostatin in the stomach also delays stomach empty, decreases gastric acid production. In other words, somatostatin shuts everything down, decreases bile, the, the gallbladder from squeezing. It shuts everything down. And when it comes to human growth hormone, which everybody wants a lot of, you don't want excess, but you want a lot because it's your happy hormone. It makes you feel great. Uh, it builds up your tissues. It's great for restoration. It is your youth hormone in moderate quantities. And the three things that affect uh, human growth hormone production, sleep, adequate sleep, adequate exercise, and stress or inflammation. When you're stressed or inflamed, you don't produce a lot of human growth hormone. If you don't sleep adequately, human growth hormone gets produced primarily when you're asleep. So over the course of an eight, ten hours sleep, yeah, (laughs) imagine that. I don't think that's happened to me since I was in utero. But an eight to ten hour sleep, your human growth hormone gets very, very high. And only when it's really high does it get dampened by somatostatin. 
So if you only sleep for three or four or five hours, you know, not even getting there. And if you don't ever get there, you're not producing some out of statin. Because you're not producing adequate human growth hormone. So you don't need the somatostatin. And what happens during the nighttime, when you're asleep, that human growth hormone triggers insulin and glucagon release. And what is glucagon doing? Glucagon is producing a huge amount of sugar through gluconeogenesis from the liver. So it's starting to produce sugar, increasing the amount of sugar that's going to your bloodstream. And the effect of human growth hormone is primarily on glucagon and less on insulin. So now you're sleeping, your HGH levels are going up, your glucagon levels are going up, you're producing a lot of sugar. And you're producing thyroid hormone, which is also a metabolic hormone. And if you sleep for 8 to 12 hours, now your somatostatin works and dump and drops all of those down, you're getting insulin production, your blood sugar goes down, and you don't have the dawn effect. But if you don't sleep a very long time, if you don't sleep well, now you've got this HGH glucagon producing a ton of sugar, you're getting this massive spike of sugar, and no somatostatin effect. That's the importance of sleep. That's the importance of good night's sleep. That's how you rest. And that's how particularly your type, two di type 1 and type 2 diabetics avoid that dawn effect by activating somatostatin. And yes, you can use somatostatin analogs. There's long-acting somatostatins, but they don't have an adequate effect. Why? Because your HGH levels haven't gotten very high. They're still rising. The glucagon levels are still rising. That's why we use metformin in the morning, by the way, folks, to dampen that uh, glucagon effect, to dampen the dawn effect. But somatostatin is a critically important hormone in terms of diabetes and blood sugar management, but it has to be naturally produced. And it can only be naturally produced by adequate exercise, by adequate sleep, and in the face of a lack of, of uh, inflammation. Lack of inflammation comes primarily from avoiding sugar and starch. Obviously, the sleep, the longer you sleep, the better. And the more physically active you are, the better you are. HGH matters. Somatostatin matters in the right proportion at the right time. And that's the way you can dampen down your own effect. Nobody's talking about this. But it's so, so important for at least physicians and healthcare providers to understand this. And if you yourself are struggling from fatigue, oh, I'm fatigued all the time. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe that's the reason for your fatigue. No somatostatin. Because, not because it's not being produced, but because all your hormones are so flat your thyroid hormones are flat, your hypothyroid, you've got Hashimoto's disease, Hashimoto's disease from chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption. HGH levels are low because you're not exercising, you're not uh, sleeping well, and um, you've got a lot of inflammation from the sugar you're eating. And you've got insulin resistance, so insulin doesn't work to get rid of the sugar. You've got glucagon out of control because you're not producing somatostatin. Restoring that normal hormonal tide perks up your fatigue, perks up your tissue repair, perks up your health in every single space. I can't stress that enough. Now I need to go have a nap, so I'm done. <laughs> we'll talk again the next time. I am the carb addiction doc. Google somatostatin. Google its effects, especially if you're diabetic. I'll see you next time.